Well, I didn't know if I'd ever break a CPM 3D steel blade, and I definitely didn't expect it on this particular knife, the Boker Bronco. And this is going to be one of the oddest videos I've made in quite a while because the full-size Bronco falls short for me in three distinct ways, but its little brother, the Bronco Mini, wins in three distinct ways and has become one of my favorite compact EDC knives to carry lately. So I'm really looking forward to illuminating you on all the wins and all the losses of the Bronco series of knives from Boker while simultaneously running into good alternatives to the full size version. So thanks for hanging with me today, guys. If you're new to the channel, I'm Aaron. This is Gideon's Tactical. Let's dive in. And let's begin by addressing the elephant in the room, tip strength and durability, and how could a CPM 3V blade snap and break where a ADCRV2 blade put through the same test would not. Now, Boker decided to make both of these knives in Germany out of excellent, very tough steels in their own right. The Mini is made out of that ADCRV2 steel. I've used it quite a bit. It is an excellent high carbon steel that is very easy to put an edge on and just get a screaming edge. It's very tough. And so when I went to do the tip test, which we do on just about every fixed blade that we test here, which is five strikes into a two by four with a little bit of side to side. I don't pry with it because knives are not designed to be pry bars and that will break a lot of knives, but there should be at least some tip strength if you're doing some stabbing and you just kind of pull it out at a weird angle. You got to know what the capabilities of a tip are. This surpassed that test and flew through it with flying colors. Now, in just a moment, we'll see why that 3V version broke, but I might need a meal break. I'm getting a little hungry. Thankfully, Factor just dropped off this week's set of meals. And in fact, since they're today's sponsor, let me tell you that my wife and I have really been enjoying these meals. Factor offers personalized dietary options, which are great for someone like myself trying to eat a high protein diet and offer options like keto, vegan, and more. And the best part is they do the meal prep for you, saving you time and money over ordering takeout. And it's super easy. All you have to do is throw it in the microwave for two minutes, pull it out, and you're ready to enjoy. And what has blown me away the most with these Factor meals is that they are super flavorful and filling. And the reason for that is because they are fresh and never frozen. <laughs> I'm freaking good. That chicken is not dry. That is awesome. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Gideon50 to get 50% off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life. That's two free wellness shots out of the three available flavors for every order while you're an active subscriber. So I invite you to check out Factor because your appetite and your taste buds won't be disappointed. And so I was expecting to see similar results out of a CPM 3V blade because 3V steel is super tough. I've used it on dozens of knives, all kinds of work, never seen an issue, it never flinches, always comes back for more. I love 3V steel when it comes to an outdoor type of steel for doing heavy duty impact types of jobs. But three, four, five. <clears throat> That, that looks like it might have bent a little bit. I mean, you start like taking photos ahead of time. It looks bent. It's definitely bent. Keep recording. Nice having a bad day. Keep recording. One, two, there it went. Look at that. And that's just really disappointing. I, I don't know what to say, except that the only thing I can think of is that the tip, even though it seemed very similar, must just have a little bit of thickness be a little thicker on the mini than on the full size. And just that that thin a tip, even though CPM 3V just cannot endure that type of tis te tip test. And just for some perspective, we have another knife I'm gonna run in here for competitive option that is very similar, that was able to surpass it and pass through that test. And it's made out of Sleipner steel. And I also did it on an ANV P200 that has a thinner stock, full flat grind Sleipner steel and it also did not bend or snap. Now, that alone does not disqualify this knife. You shouldn't be doing that type of stabbing and you know activity with a blade anyway, but there are two other design characteristics in the full size 
that just did not translate to me enjoying using the tool and fell short for me, but for whatever reason, weren't affecting the mini. It's on the full size, we have four and a half inches overall blade length and a stock thickness of 0 0.135. So just a hair over an eighth, great thickness and tapers slowly again to that dun, dun, dun tip. With a 90 degree spine, that is just like razor sharp. So they did an excellent job with that. And that high flat grind, which I really enjoy with basically a full flat tip. And so in theory, as I began to use it, you would expect a lot of good performance, great slicing capability, good for food prep, good for you know doing cordage and rope and all sorts of other materials and just eating up through that stuff. And what I found was that in certain tasks worked fine, but particularly on woodworking, if you weren't just batoning and you actually wanted to make like a good feather stick or bite in and do some good notching, the first edge the, the bevel is so micro, so small, that it does not bite into wood well. I, I was really disappointed. It did not cut through the hemp rope like we expected it would when my brother and I were testing it. And there's just a lot of other attributes that I began to discover that because of how small and broad that little tiny micro edge is before you hit the main grind, the main flat grind, uh, I, I just wasn't impressed. It just made me yawn. And I was just like, man, I'm having to put a lot of more force than I should on such a thin stock to make a feather stick, to bite into wood, to make a notch, to make a spear point. I'm just not getting the uh, acceleration of cut that I would expect out of a knife of this stock thickness. And so it ultimately comes down to just too small and not steep enough a grind angle that was, in whatever reason, the mini Bronco does have. It has a higher, grind on the main edge there. And which means, because it has the exact same stock thickness, it's gonna be three and a half inches, overall blade length, probably 3.3 cutting, uh, razor sharp, insanely sharp 90 degree spine, which is just awesome. Great sweep, love the, the profile. Easily outperformed it on every single task because of the steepness of that first edge. It w went through the hemp rope way easier. Uh, okay. Feather stick making, much easier. Any type of other utility cutting that we did through the process, it was noticeably better, even though it's the exact same stock thickness and it has the exact same style of grind. So what we discovered was it just literally came down to that the grind edge, the main edge, is just has a steeper trajectory, making it much easier to perform. And so you're going to have to basically reprofile a CPM 3B steel blade, in my opinion, to get the performance that you would want to do all sorts of cutting and other types of woodworking, which is disappointing. If it just had a steeper grind, it would be able to perform a lot better on that main edge. But you're going to have to manually do that yourself, which isn't undoable, but it's going to be a process, particularly because it's CPM 3V and it's a four and a half inch blade. It's just going to take you probably a day of getting it to where you would want it to be. We're straight out of the box. The mini is ready to rock and roll. Now I will say I'm impressed with what Boker did with the sheath options. On the full size, we have a leather sheath. It's well done, good stitching, a couple different rivets right there, the embossing, you know, of the Boker logo, the tension, is good, rides pretty deep, and will give you two different attachments, not only a single button dangler, but you could remove that and then do kind of a mid ride. And then you have a large loop for a fire steel. This is a Swedish uh, fire steel and light my fire. And we will discuss whether or not you get this will drastically affect apparently the price. So we'll get back to that in just a little bit when I run in those two competitive options then. So for a belt knife concept, I have zero complaints. That's a great leather sheath. And then on the converse, you know, uh, when you look at what the mini Bronco is, going Kydex I think was the great move. Taco design, super well done. It's gonna come with, it's not quite an ulti clip. Ulti clip would be perfect, but this is like runner up. This is very good. I probably won't even put an ulti clip on this. It's just this really nice ambidextrous. You swap it right or left pretty rigid hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see that with the lighting there we go pretty rigid clip right there i pocket carry this in my front pocket all the time but you could easily run it you know in your back pocket on your belt if you just would prefer that and got a little bit of slap but i mean that sheath ain't coming out or it's not coming out of the sheath without the thumb ramp but then you can just pull and deploy so for pocket carry which i'm doing a lot more like front pocket carry 
of my compact fixed blades. This is excellent and one of the better Kydex sheaths for an EDC I've seen in a, in a while. Now the next attribute that seemed to adapt really well to how I use EDC knives, but just really did not connect with me on the belt knife full size Bronco. And I'm talking about the rubberized over molded handles. Now these are full tank constructed. So you see the tanks coming out the back there. They are identical in dimensions. And with all the pounding, you know, all the stuff, there was no rattling, creaking or anything like that. So the rubberized like attachment is working really well. And what I found was with the mini, it gives you a lot of real estate that you don't always get with a full size, or excuse me, with a compact fixed blade. A lot of times, you know, the blade is small and the handle is small and it doesn't really work. This works really well, fills out plenty of real estate on the back end, lanyard hole, tapering on the back, palm swell in the center, and then tapering a little bit near that neck and then a little bit of the guard that kind of gives the illusion of a Puko, but gives me tons of grip so I can really pierce. I can do heavy cuts in a reverse grip. I was never concerned about sliding up on the blade, which transfers over great for a compact EDC. But when I look at a handle for a dedicated belt knife that I'm gonna be doing a lot of work with that's over four inches in blade length, there's gonna be a lot of leverage put on this. I want a beefier handle. It's too thin. It's only 0.6 up here by the neck and it's 0.4 like 5.5 five back here and a maximum thickness of like 0.75. So it's just way too slim. My finger was floating a lot near the neck. The Mora Garberg is even a little bit beefier on the handle and all of the dimensions compared to the Bronco. And just for some perspective, this will be in the competitive options in a little bit. Here's another Craton handled knife. You can see how much beefier that is compared to the Bronco. This feels great in my large size hands. This is just way too slim, narrow, and just didn't give me, for those who know, don't say. But both of the competitive options that I'm gonna show you in the similar size range have way thicker, beefier handles that just fill out, give you a lot of real estate to work with, and doesn't feel like your hand is floating. So let's go ahead and talk pricing on these two designs and competitive options, particularly for the full size. We'll kind of park on that for a, a little bit in a moment. So we'll address the mini first. Now the mini I paid $105 for over a DLT trading. Um, for that price, I would pay it again based off of everything that I'm seeing as performance level and just I, the enjoyment factor and caring that I'm doing with it a lot. It's definitely something I would throw money at again. Um, I will have links in the description box below over to all the affiliate networks I partner with if you do feel like the mini Bronco makes sense or some of the competitive options or for whatever reason, the full size. Uh, always appreciate it when you guys use the hyperlinks provided below. It's a simple way for you to support the channel. I get a small commission for every sale generated through those links. So just really appreciate it. it. Helps me buy this type of gear and then do what we're doing here. Now for this guy, as I highlighted a little earlier, it's so funny. When it dropped, it was $205. And I was like, that's a lot of money. It seems kind of high, like 175-ish, 150. That'd be more my preference, particularly for the materials, you know, and that type of stuff. So. Uh, I, I picked it up on a sale over Christmas, got it a good deal. But what I've discovered recently is that if you go with the Fire Steel version, still the same price, but you can now buy them without the Fire Steel. Everything is exactly the same from what I can tell, but just no Fire Steel. And I've seen them as low as some distributors as like 155. So for the materials, way more reasonable. And I don't know why they're doing that. I don't know if they're just trying to move them and they're having a hard time moving them with the Fire Steel at that price point. I don't know if there's like other reasons they're just trying to give people options, v very curious. With that said, there are two options that I would easily go with over the full size. Uh, the first one that came to my mind, which is very similar kind of in material, but just crushes it is the uh, Cold Steel Master Hunter in CPM 3B. Made in Taiwan, but excellent stuff that they've been doing for decades now and the handle is way thicker, beefier, just really what I look for. And if this knife had had this type of handle again, I mean, it just would have like been so much better. I've seen them as low as I think like 120 all the way up to like 160. So it just kind of depends on, you know, where, where you pick them up. And on the flip side, great alternative is the Lion Steel B40. Now this is made in Italy, uh, Sleipner Steel. We did the exact same tip test as this one and it passed. Uh, and the edge geometry is excellent. I think they're about the same stock thickness. It does have a little 90 degree taper right there, full tang. You get all sorts of different handle color combinations. They're in the same category, but again, this just totally crushes it on not only ergonomics, but 
performance and edge geometry, these guys you can sometimes score for like 130 to 160. It just depends on kind of variant and handle material you decide to go with. So there's an alternative that is also a great option. So just interesting to me that <laughs> This one is just a total dud. The full size, it just would need a complete redesign for me to even be interested. But the Mini just crushed it. I love this blade. I, I carry it a lot. It is a really good compact fixed blade with a lot of capability for me. That's me, my mileage, guys. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Leave a comment below. Uh, I appreciate your guys' feedback, particularly if you own one of these Broncos, how have they been performing for you. And I invite you to check out the other video, to subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.